Well, uh, so what are we going to do today, uh, Cousin P.W.? The same thing we do every day, Melvin. Try to take over the neighborhood. Oh, uh, what's the matter there, uh, Cousin B.W.? You look a little distracted. Well, I guess I am a little distracted there, Melvin. It's the end of the month, and trying to figure out the bills. Making sure we've got enough to keep a roof over our head. Well, yeah, I, I certainly understand there, Cousin B.W. Things can be kind of rough when it's tight. Ain't that the truth, Melvin. But I'm pretty used to it. No crying the blues here. I was born poor to a poor family. Been poor most of my life with a few pockets here and there. But I can't complain. It's been a good life. But, you know, being poor most of my life would make you think I'd probably agree with the video we're going to look at today. It's a video by everybody's favorite cross-dressing lesbian, Riley J. Dennis. But, even though I do agree with a couple of his points, for the most part, uh, I think the video kind of shows that Riley really doesn't understand what it is to be poor. And to be responsible. So, let's take a look at this thing. Alright, here's the thing. I have this really controversial opinion that poor people deserve nice things every once in a while. I think poor people don't have to be constantly suffering and struggling. I don't know why that's controversial, but here we are. You've probably seen these graphics from Fox News that everyone made fun of a few years ago where they were saying that poor people aren't really poor if they have refrigerators and microwaves. More recently, you may have heard about bills being proposed to stop poor people from spending food stamp money on soda, fast food, steak, lobster, all that kind of stuff. Or programs being put in place to drug test welfare recipients. Now, while I agree, Riley, that it's nice for anybody poor or anyone to have little spots of happiness here and there, it's how responsible with that happiness that I have a problem with. But we'll get into that a lot more later when we get into your uh, your points that you just pointed out here, your little bullet points. But let me just say this, being poor or what constitutes poor is subjective. I would agree that a refrigerator is a necessity today. However, I would argue that a microwave is not. You can certainly prepare very nice meals, probably nicer meals, without a microwave. You can get by without one. You would not be able to get by without a refrigerator very well, although I've had to do it from time to time when mine breaks. Coolers are wonderful things. But it is subjective. For instance, because I do have a refrigerator and a microwave and some other things, and I consider myself poor by this country's standards, according to third world countries, I'm pretty rich. Because there's people over there eating out of dumps and living in tin shacks. So it's subjective. But let's stick with what we consider poor in this country, and let's see what you, what more you've got to say about it, shall we? To me, it seems like all of this stuff kind of stems from like two ideas. The first is that poor people have to be in a constant state of suffering to really be poor. So if they have any kind of nice thing in their life, they're suddenly not poor and shouldn't be allowed to receive any kind of government assistance. Oh, Riley. See, it's this first statement right here that makes me believe that you have no idea what it's really like to be poor. Do you think that it's only things that makes a poor person happy or can make them happy? There's a lot more to happiness than the things money can buy. Love, companionship, friends. Some of the best times I've ever had in my life had absolutely nothing to do with money. Just because we're poor doesn't mean we need money to be happy. Are there times we could be a little happier if we had money? Sure, because then the stress of paying that next bill is off of our back. For most of us that are poor, that's the biggest stress. Not because we don't have a microwave, or a color TV, or, well, all TVs are color anymore, showing my age there, sorry, or, you know, an Xbox, or anything like that, the, the, the I wants, the get me's, not what I, I need. Now, the second part of that statement we'll get into more later when you start picking up pat on points. 
The second part of this is that people think they're entitled to morally dictate the lives of welfare recipients because technically they're being paid with taxpayer money. For the first part of that, I think people just have no concept of what it's like to be poor. Like a refrigerator is a pretty basic amenity in the US. You kind of need it to store food. I can imagine like 500 scenarios where someone has a refrigerator and is still struggling financially. It's not like a fridge is some opulent sign of wealth. You could easily be living paycheck to paycheck, barely being able to afford your rent and eating instant ramen for dinner every night while still living in an apartment with a fridge. Yeah, I already said that a refrigerator is a necessity of life. However, I see you conveniently left out the microwave, which was not a necessity. And that's the whole point. While there are things that are necessary, and you'll point out some more, and I'll agree with you on the ones that are necessary, but there are a lot of things in this life that just aren't. And sometimes being poor means having to make that choice. It's just the way it is. It's the fact of life. But that's not the only thing. Like, a lot of poor families have cars. A car is often a necessity in areas that don't have a good public transportation system. And lots of jobs even discriminate against people who don't have a reliable form of transportation. So if a person or a family is able to save up for a car somehow, that doesn't automatically mean they're not poor anymore. You can be struggling financially and have some old beat up car that you use to get to work. Things that may have once been luxuries are now relatively accessible. Like smartphones, for instance. Lots of people seem to think that anyone who can afford a smartphone is not poor. But not every smartphone is a $700 hundred dollar iPhone. In fact, you can buy a smartphone on Amazon for like 50 bucks now. And actually, lots of poor people rely on smartphones for accessing the internet. Because in the US in 2017, you really need access to the internet to be able to function as a part of modern society. Internet access is essential for finding jobs, paying bills, doing your taxes, and just generally keeping up with everything that's going on. But even if someone has a cheap smartphone, an old car, and a refrigerator, it's not like they're suddenly middle class or wealthy. You can have all of those things and still have a job that barely pays enough to cover your rent. I don't know what people People expect like everyone who has a roof over their head is financially secure. That's just not reality. Financial security requires a lot more than a refrigerator. It requires higher wages because that's what being poor is. It's an income level. That's it. You're right, Riley. Those things have become a necessity in today's day and age. A cell phone, internet access, a car, even if it's an old beater. Well, I'd be ashamed to let you see what we drive around in. And those things are necessities. But the point is, there's a lot of things that aren't, and you're not talking about those right now. And that's what people have a problem with. I've never talked to anybody in my life that was mad because a poor person owned a refrigerator. So you're, you're deflecting from the real issue here, is what I see. I, I know some agree with you on what you're saying, but they're not catching how you're deflecting from what the real problem is. And we'll talk more about that in the next segment, I think. And if people want to splurge on some things using their very limited income, they have every right to do that. If someone manages to spend less money on certain things so they can afford a nicer car or a nicer smartphone, that's up to them. We all prioritize our money differently. Some people spend more money on entertainment, like video games and movies and going out. Others spend more money on their clothes or their makeup or their car. People are different and will prioritize things differently, even if they're working with very limited resources. I hate the idea that poor people all have to live the exact same life where they eat beans and rice and instant ramen every day and never splurge on anything and are constantly constantly working and working and working to earn more money. People, regardless of their income level, deserve to feel joy sometimes. People deserve to relax and have some time to themselves. If someone has a bad day and wants to get McDonald's on the way home from work rather than cooking an entire meal at home, that's their business. If someone wants to relax after a long week at work by buying a video game or going out with their friends, they have every right to do that. Poor people shouldn't have to be in a constant state of struggle, suffering all day every day for their experiences to be valid. Lots of people who are in a really tough spot financially will spend money on stuff that makes them feel good, and that's okay because people aren't robots. You can't expect people to never want to treat themselves. Mentally, we need to feel good every once in a while. We need to take care of ourselves. And sometimes that requires spending money on things that aren't technically necessary for survival, but are very necessary for living. And those things are subjective. Everyone has different things that they'll like and spend money on. And even more stuff comes out of your mouth, Riley, that makes me believe you really have never been poor in your life. You really don't get it and you don't understand it. You're right. In the scenario you have so far put forth, it is their business how they spend their money. However, anybody that knows me or has followed me a little bit knows that I am big on personal responsibility. You are responsible for yourself, not anyone else. Is this 
the kind of society you want? Something tells me you might think that you'd be happy with that. But yeah, even though it's their business, how they spend it, let's look at a scenario. What if they spent money on that nicer car when the old junker would have still done them just as well for a little while longer, and then they can't put food on their table, or they can't pay their rent? That's what pro people have a problem with, not the simple fact of them owning it. You're missing the point entirely. What if they bought those video games or a new PS4 and then they couldn't feed their kids? And I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. I've made those mistakes in my life. You know? And, and a lot of you listening to me right now probably have made those mistakes in your life. And you know I'm telling you the truth. Sure, we deserve happiness. But happiness can be found without having to spend money that you just don't have. I'm sorry that you don't have it. I'm sorry that your job doesn't pay you more. But it is what it is. And you take care of yourself and you take care of your own. If you don't have the money, don't spend it on frivolities. Find another way to be happy. And if you think that you need those things to be happy, think again. Your mind is too focused on the wrong goal. Now, I mentioned earlier there was a few pockets that I wasn't poor. I made really good money, really good money under the Reagan administration. And you know what? I wasn't any happier then than I am now, just barely making it paycheck to paycheck, month to month. Not really. Sure, I had more things. You know? My son-in-law that has left was real big on going out and buying this video game or that laptop or this tablet that he really wanted and explained it away to himself that, you know, it made him happy and he should be happy, the same arguments you're making. And within a few weeks, invariably, he'd have to turn around and hawk them because he couldn't put food in his kid's belly because he spent the money. So you tell me, Riley... Which way is the right way to live there? But okay, so maybe you're okay with poor people spending their own money on that. But what about with their own welfare? Because then they're spending your money. When we talk about welfare, we're usually talking about food stamps through the SNAP program or income assistance through the TANF program. Both of these things are relatively small chunks of the federal budget, but they're definitely still taxpayer funded. So shouldn't we have a say in exactly what poor people can buy with the money that's given to them through these programs? No. Yes. Of course not. Because those people still deserve autonomy in how they choose to spend their money. It sounds really dystopian to imagine a society where rich people spend their money however they want while giving a small percentage of their money to poor people and then dictating exactly how those poor people can spend their money because of that. Like your employer, just because they pay you, isn't allowed to tell you what kind of food to buy or what kind of stuff you're allowed to spend money on. The same goes for taxpayers and welfare recipients. Riley, can you get any more apples and oranges? Cheese, oh Pete. Those are two different things. If you have a job, you earn that money. And of course, you have a right to spend it any way you want. If a person is getting government subsidy, which I've been on food stamps before in my life and other things, then there should be restrictions on what they're allowed to spend it on. I don't want them spending it on cigarettes and, you know, different soda pops and if they can get by with hamburger instead of steak i'm sorry but their belly will still be full we don't live in a communist society where everybody's got to be on the same level riley and you need to get it through your head it's a sad part of life but people with limited amount of money have to make choices and I don't want to have to pay for their choice. As a poor person, and a person that's been on the government subsidies before, yes, we should have restrictions on it. And this is in no way like how you spend your money that you earned on your job. 
But at the end of the day, I know this isn't about following the money. It's about poor people. Because without counting military personnel, the government employs almost 3 million people. That includes US Postal Service workers, judges, Congress people, and even the president. So it's weird that we have different standards for poor people being paid by taxpayer money and federal employees being paid by taxpayer money. Maybe instead of worrying if poor people are spending their fixed monthly welfare money on a $2 soda, we could instead worry about Trump's $1 to $3 million trips to his golf course every weekend. Or maybe we could require that all federal employees, including Congress, people be paid minimum wage and not be allowed to buy anything except rice and beans and instant ramen. I mean, obviously we shouldn't do that, but can't you see how ridiculous it sounds that everyone paid by taxpayer money has to live like that? Again, apples and oranges, Riley. Jeez. Stay, try to stay on topic, will you please? Government employees earn their money. Okay? It's a job. They're paid, just happen to be paid by the government. It's got nothing to do with somebody on the government dole. My dad's retired from the post office, government employee. He earned every penny he got. They're not all congressmen and presidents that you don't agree with, so you don't think they should make that money. Now, whether you agree with them or not, and I don't know, Ace, they're earning their money. It's not just getting handed to them, at least not in most cases, like it is people that are on government assistance. It's two different things. And do you realize that not all poor people are in just beans and rice? Government assistance actually gives you some pretty decent food if you use your stamps right. Okay? Jeez, oh, Pete, you're really starting to get under my skin with this. Oh, and one last thing, drug testing welfare recipients. Every program that has ever been put in place to do that has actually cost taxpayers more money because testing is expensive and they rarely ever catch anyone. I don't think I need to make a lengthy argument about that. The data is pretty clear. But just on a moral level, I think it's wrong to deny someone money that they need for food or rent just because they smoke weed or something like that. Get over it. Let people live their lives. So yeah, basically, it's not your job to tell other people how they spend their money. Everyone, including poor people, does deserves to be able to spend their money on whatever makes them happy. You know, the pursuit of happiness and all that. Anyways, that's all I had for you today. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. No, Riley, no. Now, I don't know the stats, and I don't know how much it costs, but honestly, I'm for the drug testing. I'm not against smoking weed. If it was legal here, I might very well smoke it myself for pain or, or what have you, or just for recreation. But it's not legal, so I don't. I haven't touched it in 35 years. But there's a reason they test for that. You do realize that people can turn in their food stamps for money and buy drugs with it, right? Oh, you probably don't know that, right, Riley? And if somebody's on a government assistance, I don't want them spending it on reefer and then not be able to put it on their kids, put food on their kids' table. And that happens. That's real life, Riley, not the little bubble that you live in. So yeah, surprise, surprise, I'm for the drug testing. I'd like to see it continue even if it cost a dollar or two. And don't you think that people are probably, if they know the drug test is coming, unless it's random, they're probably getting themselves ready for it and laying off the weed long enough so they don't lose their assistance. Imagine that. People are tricky sometimes. Anyway, Riley, I think you've totally missed the point. And anybody that agrees with you here has probably missed the point. I, I get it. I, I get the appeal of uh, of wanting to agree with him here. Because like I said, I'm poor. We literally sometimes have to figure out from day to day just how we're going to get food in the house. But I don't feel I have to have things to make me happy. There's other ways to be happy. You could be poor and be happy. And if you want to buy those things, then fine. Save up the money and buy it. Just make sure that your children aren't suffering or you're not going without eating or some other stupid thing just to own a PS4 or to go eat steak or to buy a bag of reefer. So anyway, that's all the time I got for this. I hope I made sense to some of you because I know a few aren't going to agree with me. Uh, by the way, I want to thank Pagan Minotaur who brought this uh, video to my attention. Thank you, bud. And, uh, hey, as always, get out of my yard. It ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe, if you don't know by now. And there ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. Reason I'm traveling on Don't think twice it's
wish that